Two years after we talked to Komu, we are back with the company and we have Kian here from Komu and he's gonna show us what the Komu Assist can do which is basically an enhancement to a car's existing Level 2 semi-autonomous driving and we are doing the testing with none other than the lovely Proton X50 so without further ado, let's get to it This is the main, definitely the main device here, which is, which is the brain and the eyes of the system. Lah. Yeah, and then um, how we do interface with the ADAS and also the ACC and also the LKA signals is actually through the relay. We call it the relay. So the relay is actually uh, placed inside and then it is actually uh, connected. We unplug the original connectors and then we loop in our hardware by plugging into the, the specific connectors for each model. Yeah. The system is engaged now. The screen frame is green color, and then actually I'm not holding on the brakes and stuff. So actually it's uh, holding itself at zero km per hour. So this feature itself, it normally solves the problem of like uh, our user getting stuck in a traffic jam, they can get more relaxed. Yeah, so you don't have to always stamp, you have to st uh, put your foot on, onto the brake pedal and also you can be more relaxed. Yeah, so uh, once the front car leaves, then it will actually auto follow, yeah. Yeah, as you can see, even the slightest movement on the frontal camera, it, it starts to release the brake already. This is what the original system can't do. I mean, across all models, even they can do stop and go. What they will do is that they will hold the electronic parking brake. And then if you want to resume, what they will prompt you to do is you have to step on the gas pedal or you need to push on the resume button. Yeah. This new stop and go feature, actually we just uh, released it out in our version 7 of our software. So um, how we do it is it, re it, re it is really on um, the demand from our users. So they keep asking us, you know, like, hey, do I, is it possible, even possible for my Vs to get stop and go? Because what they want is they look at Elza, the new Elza, now they have it because it okay. has the electronic parking brake. We have actually enabled their ACC down to 0 km per hour. Mm -hmm. The original stop for MyV and Atiwa, the MyV facelift and Atiwa, they actually will disengage the ACC if you go below 25 or 30 km per hour, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. And thanks to one of our users that was really, really like, you know, never give up asking, you know. <laughs> so they asked us like three or four times and then, okay, okay let us try. So then we will like, you know, we work with their cars, we work with our user's car and then like uh, we try to like inject signals and stuff. Then once we think that, hey, it worked and then we will patch it on top of, I mean like on the new software update. Yeah, so that is how we, how we support our community. Some users might not get used to our display here. So they prefer to having to look at uh, their, their own meter cluster. Yeah, to know what's going on, uh, what set speed am I at, or whether the system is engaged or not. So yeah, we do link that together. So whatever is originally there, we don't take it away. Yeah, because we have, we have, uh, we have gotten or gotten any uh, some feedback about like, hey, don't don't change the behavior of the original system, you know. So yeah, I mean, users definitely want what they used to have, lah. All the AEB, all the safety features, the active safety features like emergency braking and, and lane departure prevention, everything is still there. What we essentially do is that we play around with the um, adaptive cruise control signal and also the lane keep assist or some, some cars they call it the lane tracing assist, right? Yeah, so we essentially uh, play around with these two signals. Yeah, other than that, everything is still there. So essentially we use whatever the car gives us. Yeah, if it has the blind spot monitoring function, then we use it. If the car has ACC and LKA signals, then we use it. In the least, it really depends on what the car model has, and then we fully utilize the signal that the, the stock car comes with. Yeah. For the driver awareness, right, um, it's actually um, the front camera. So it's another layer of AI model, which is actually uh, um, shining onto the, you know, the camera is actually shining onto the driver's face. So if let's say, I were to cover the bottom, the bottom hole, which is the camera. Yeah, you can see the icon gray off. Oh. So it, yeah, so this means that the, the actually the system cannot cannot detect your face, and then it will actually uh slowly it will actually prompt the user and say you will see the pay attention screen, and if you continue to not pay attention, it will turn orange. It will beep with sound, and if still still distracted it will actually turn the whole screen to red color and then it will be it will, it will create a sound, siren noise 
yeah, to, to, to alert the driver. And in the meantime, we don't disengage the system. It will slow down and then uh, it will still not disengage because we think that at that moment of time, the driver is already distracted. And if we disengage, it will be even more dangerous. Yeah. So that's we call it, uh, that, that feature, we call it the driver focus monitoring. So we're going to give the Komu Assist system a try for ourselves now. And the best case scenario, the best use case scenario for such a system is really when you're cruising on the highway because it will make the drive so much more relaxing and you don't have to focus too intently though you should still be looking at the road so we're gonna give it a try once we're here in the lane activity system and now it's driving the car and it does a very good job it doesn't ping pong it doesn't jump from one uh, line to another it's staying in the center of the lane quite well and it's really quite impressive and even more aggressive turns, the car seems to be able to still do it and it's now detecting the motorbike in front. So it does detect motorbikes, though if it's swerving in from a sharp angle, it may not be able to, so just keep that in mind. But overall, it does feel like a proper level two semi-autonomous driving and that is a very impressive feat from a system that is added on to a car's existing level 2 semi-autonomous driving system. Now you may be wondering if a car already has level 2 semi-autonomous driving, why get Komu Assist? Well, for a couple of reasons. Even though some cars do have a ADA system, they don't really support stop and go traffic for some models like uh, my own personal Civic for example, does have stop and go traffic, but it requires me to step on the pedal when my car has been stationary for about 3 seconds. But with Komu Assist, there is actually an auto resume function. So I don't really have to press on the pedal. It will just keep on following the lead car no matter how long my car has been stationary. And that is very convenient. Aside from that, some cars ADA system can't really negotiate more aggressive uh, turnings. But Komu Assist in our experience with the X50 anyway, does seem to be able to follow pretty steep corners. It's not wholly recommended to just let the car do its thing, of course. It's still best to have your hands on the steering wheel to negotiate the corner properly. So that is Komo Assist. It's really quite a good supplement to a car's existing ADA system. So if you've got a car with ADAS and you're not quite satisfied with the performance, give Komu a consideration. You can check out the full list of cars that support Komu Assist on komu.ai. And if your car is not in the list, you can actually get in touch with Komu for it to support your particular model. And you can even test drive the system to see if you like it or not. The whole kit costs 3,500 ringgit and that may seem like a lot of money but you are getting a lot of value in the sense of the added features to make your drives that much more relaxing. So that is it. Like this video if you liked it, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and always stay tuned for more good stuff to come here on NextShift and NextShift.com.